and welcome back to Sew What If I Sew, or welcome if you're new, my name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And today you join me for another video sort of I'm catching up with myself, but you join me for a video, uh, the next one in my sewing machine review series for this wonderful machine, the Singer 675C heavy duty computerised model. Now let's get this out of the way first of all, this machine was gifted to me. Um, what, in the summer, August I think, uh, when I became an ambassador for Singer. However, it was made very clear to me that there was no obligation of, like, I didn't have to be nice about it. Um, what uh, Jason from uh, Singer Outlet actually said to me was, we'd be keen to hear your thoughts. As you guys know, I've reviewed a couple of other Singer models that I own. Um, and actually, I now do own this. For a while it was um, on loan, but it is now mine, which is exciting. Um, but it is a fabulous machine, and as always, I refuse to review something when I buy it, in a way some brands would like, because I don't think you actually know anything about a sewing machine until you've spent a few months with it. So I've been using this for, for nearly five months, I'll be honest. It's given my starlet a break. Uh, wherever we next live, hopefully I will have space to have both out, that would really help. Um, but currently I swap between the two using them for different things. Um, and this machine is fabulous, I love it. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the machine and sort of specs, price points, that sort of stuff. I'm going to tell you my favourite things about it and as always I'll highlight anything that I feel could be better or just things to be aware of really. So if you're ready, grab a cup of tea, mine matches my sewing machine, I didn't realise, and join me. So, let's have a first chat about this machine. Um, when I was gifted it, I was basically asked, oh this is a new model, do you want to try it? And I was like, yes, always. I mean, who says no? Uh, particularly as it's got some features I actually wanted when I was looking to buy my starlet, but I couldn't afford. So I was quite excited to try this machine. Um, if you're interested in these things, it's got um, 1100 stitches per minute, so it's a speedy boy. Uh, it's got 400 stitch applications. It is computerised, obviously, as you guys can see, so there is embroidery. We'll go through a little bit of that later on. Um, and yeah, it, is, it packs a punch, this machine. It says on the website it has enhanced piercing power, but basically it's got a really good motor. Um, and yeah, it is a really sturdy machine. It lives up to the sort of heavy duty brand that my overlocker also belongs to. Um, and it really, I'm still on a normal 90 gauge needle in this, and I've sewed like denim and stuff. It really is, it's a, it's a workhorse, this, I love it. Um, and there's some features I absolutely love about it. Um, which we'll get onto in a minute, but for reference, I think without any discount, this machine is around the £600 mark, I think. Um, it's hard because at the moment, I, when I'm filming this, there's a Black Friday sale on, and it, I think it's 499 So, normally, it's around £600. Uh, I would recommend this machine for, I mean, realistically, it's... It's not, I, I don't agree necessarily with segmenting machines by consumer in that way. However, if I had to pick a sort of grouping, I would say Adventurous Beginner Plus. So maybe I wouldn't recommend it if this was your, like your first machine, but if you've got like a cheapy little machine and you're actually really enjoying sewing and you want to level up, this is a good machine, this is a good option if you've got a little more budget to spend. Uh, it's got a lot of features that aren't maybe essential but are really good and equally it's got some sort of basic features I don't think about anymore that I love. I absolutely love them. Um, so yeah, it is, I'd say it's, it's for adventurous beginners up because what it can do is probably more appropriate to the projects you would be trying. But also if you're somebody who is, you know, maybe you're a very experienced seller and you've been struggling along with an old machine for ages, it's a good upgrade. I'm a big fan. Uh, so let's have a look at this machine in detail. So I've turned you so you're facing the machine so you can have a look at what I'm talking about. So we have a selection of buttons here. So we have a speed adjuster for how quickly you can actually sew. It's also a speed limiter. So if you put it down here, no matter how hard you press on the foot pedal, um, you will only be able to sew quite slowly or vice versa if you really go for it. 
you will have a lot of speed up here. I think this is a really nice way to manage the amount of speed and power this machine has. It has a knot tying off button, which is vastly superior to back stitching at the beginning and end of seams. Changed my mind, I'm a big fan. Um, so there's a needle up, needle down, which can be really, really handy if, you know, if you've got your hands full with your project doing that instead of, it still d does have the wheel on the side, you know, so you can do it manually. And I have got the machine on. Um, so you can still do it, but I like this button a lot. You have a play button, so it can just sew on its own, which is quite cool. Um, I do have some scrap fabric near me, which I can demo these on actually. Excuse this, this is very, very scrap fabric, but hopefully it'll demo what I mean. So we have got our little lever at the back. We'll use our needle down button. So it just goes straight down, it's not too sharp. Our little knot button. Uh, I'm going to put it right down to slow. We have a back stitch, or we have, and it just it just goes, and then you just pause it. I have used that function. It makes me a bit nervous in the same way that cruise control on cars makes me nervous because I'm like, oh, I feel out of control. But actually, I've used this quite a lot recently on very long seams where I kind of want both hands. I don't know, just to be able to do it. And what's nice is. If I lift the foot pedal so you can see what I'm doing, because I suddenly just realised you won't see. If I press, but then I use the foot pedal, I can slow it down. So like cruise control on a car, I can then make it go or stop. And then we'll tie off our little stitch end button. See, it's quite fun. Um, one of the things on this machine that makes me ridiculously happy, by the way, we do have our normal snip at the side. There we go. One of the things that makes me absolutely delighted about this machine is the way the sewing machine arm works and the pocket works. Now, traditionally, you would take off the arm and there would be an annoying little pocket in here, which is kind of useless, really annoying, and something always gets stuck at the bottom of it. However, if I take this off and show it to you a bit more closely, firstly, there's a nice ruler on the outside, but look at this. Look at that, unfolding pocket, it's a drop-in pocket, so I can find all the things I actually need to find. I cannot explain how ridiculously happy this made me when I first got it. I was like, why does no one else do this? This is incredible. Um, one of the other couple of things, like these are separate to my actual proper list. Um, I love how much space there is around here. I think it's really useful, particularly when you're working on bulky projects. And I love having the metal that extends either side this uh, isn't the same on my Starla, it is plastic over here. And I found that big projects, A, there's more clearance here. Um, you've kind of got a bit of extra space either side. I've also got the table, which I won't show you in this video, but I'll show you a picture of. Um, and yeah, I found that bigger projects, just there's so much space. Uh, as always on a Singer model, if you want to lift the presser foot even further, you press it up so you can go down, middle or up. To change the feet, there's the normal snap at the back and lift. It doesn't do what um, some brother models do, which I really like, is um, uh, which is if you were like to put the foot down on the foot, it like snaps on automatically. You do need to use the catch at the back, which is still a bit fiddly, but it's okay. Um, and then basically away you go. I'll talk about this more in a minute, but there is a drop in bobbin, so with your standard nice little plastic plate. I am going to be very careful. Oh no, that's just out, Never mind. Right, so I've pulled my bobbin out. I've never had a drop-in bobbin before these and I love it, I am such a convert. So to thread it, you just put it in round and then there's a nice little uh, cutter there which makes it nice and easy. Slip it in and then again, we are ready to sew. You don't have to make sure the bobbin's pulling out. It's really lovely. Uh, stitch selection is over here, so we have a range of stitches. Move you guys down a little bit because we also have these, which are really cool little stitch selection tabs. So you have a variety of stitches, different buttonholes, button sections. I couldn't find these the other day because I literally forgot these were in here. I was doing a button the other night. So two is decorative stitches, buttonholes, and you know other button paraphernalia. Three is decorative, more embroidery stitches. So you can see the little three there. And then four is lettering. 
so I don't know if you guys can see that properly but it is basically like an alphabet there and you can select it I did use this a little bit on Adam's present and it works quite well so we'll lift up I would definitely recommend using thicker thread like top stitching thread for it because I use normal thread and the letters are a little thin but yeah I mean definitely very good um we have a variety of things here so if you want to change between those modes you press the M button as you can see I'm moving along here two four there we go and we're back to the beginning back to one we have on the dial maybe a little closer so you can see um we have our needle position which I always really like because it reminds me if I've set myself over here I can see where my needle is which I think is really useful there are computerized models where you can just select, like on my Starlight, you literally just have like a number selection. But having a little screen is actually really useful. It surrounds your standard stitches in a box, which is great if you forget what you're doing. And then obviously this is stitch length over here. It also shows you if your needle is up or down, which is, you know, useful in case you forget. Uh, not that I ever have, but you know, I'm sure I might at some point. I'll pop that back down so I can... So then there's also a variety of needle settings over here I've not fully explored. Um, so it's not the same. I should say this button looks the same as the needle up or down button because it's got the same signal, but it is not. Um, so there are a variety of kind of optional settings here. Um, I'll be honest, even though I've had this for months and I have used a huge amount of the functionality, I've not explored everything. There is still plenty to explore on this machine. So let's have a little look at the top. So apologies for any mess you can see in the background. So we have a proper side bobbin, which I love. And I have to, I'm going to gently tip the machine. Um, and I love actually that it's properly on top at the side rather than the starlet where it's at the back and still really hard to see. This is actually really good and it tilts up a bit so you can still see it if you want to. Um, then you obviously second thread here to fill the bobbin. It's the standard, but it's got this little clip here, which I think is fabulous. Can you see that? It's like a little, let's see if I can get you a bit closer. It's like a little, it almost looks a little bit like a wave. It's, it keeps the thread on between here and um, the kind of first stage of the threading process, which is somewhere my thread used to skip on my starlet. So I like that, it's functional design. Um, here we have, this is the amount, it took me a while to figure out what this is, um, this is the amount of pressure you can exert on the pressure foot. So it screws, it doesn't press. And one is very gentle, two is the sort of standard, and three is like a lot more resistance on the um, presser foot. Not presser foot, what am I talking about? The foot pedal, there we go. Too many feet. And this here is the stitch tension. So you've got a variety of options all the way up to nine. Three to five is a sort of standard location, and I like that on top of them they've got little drawings that show what they are. Let's see if I can move you guys up to see that. So hopefully you can see there's little drawings on here. So here we are, that's a little tour of the machine um, for you. Now let's get into what I really love about it. So what do I love about this machine? I mean, so many things. It is fabulous. I'll turn it a little bit so you can still see the machine, because that's really why you're here, not really me. Um, so this machine, firstly, it's, it's just so powerful. It's really like an effective piece of kit and you guys know I love that. But there's a few things about it that make me deeply, deeply happy. One of those is the button functionality here. So we just talked about it, the speed limiter or um, increaser, <laughs> the knot button, the needle down. They're things you don't necessarily need, but it's really nice to have them. It really is, especially, you know, if you're doing the automatic sewing thing, be able to limit it to being slow sewing so you can, you know, use both your hands or like, um, I had a sore foot recently um, because I'd been walking so much and actually it was really nice not to have to use my foot for the foot pedal when I was a bit sore and I can imagine there are people for whom not using their feet would be, a, you know, a real plus or for accessibility reasons being able to kind of automatically sew would be useful. I know there's other options as well, but um, I thought that was quite nice actually and I have to say, I've kind of got used to it. <laughs> I really like having it. Um, it's good functionality, it's useful, and um, it's definitely changed as well. My seam beginning and ends are so much neater with the knot button, because it is, it's just better than um, backstitching, because there's no mess. In particular on delicate seams, sometimes I find my backstitch would like chew it up a bit. 
not on this machine, on, on my others, every other machine I've ever used, in fact, um, <laughs> you know, it can be a little messy. So be able to just tie a knot and then sew, I found really nice. Like, it worked really, really well. Thing two I love is the thread path. So let me try and show you what I mean. The thread path on this is epic. Firstly, pop it on here. Then it goes through this nice little little catch roll I talked about earlier. Then through the normal hook and then down. Again, what is fabulous about this, if I move you down a little bit, is that this sticks out and it like smooths back into where you need to be. So what I've found is I have not had a single thread jam using this. Whereas I used to have quite a few on my old machines where, you know, sometimes going down this gap and then coming back up, it can skip and end up not hooked onto here. Whereas with this, where it sticks out, it doesn't do that. I found that it's so easy to thread. And then you obviously pop, pop it through the hook at the top. Something as well is different about this hook to my other model because I have found, I think there's a little jammer halfway down. Um, let's see if I can turn you guys enough to see that. So there's a little jammer halfway down, which I don't think my starlet has. And I found that again, it's preventing thread skips really, really well. So then we're down, there's another nice little loop here for the thread to go through because let's be honest it never actually ends up going through this one at the top of the needle. And then down into the needle threader there is, as on the previous models, an automatic needle threader which I cannot remember what I used to do without. It is fabulous. Oh and while we're here it is the same buttonhole as the Singer Starlet so I've linked that video below um, so you can see because I do a proper demo of how to use it so that's at the back there as well but it is the thread path is fabulous like i can't explain how simple and comfortable it is to thread i've had no issues uh, my third thing i love about this machine is how much space there is here and over here by the foot plate it has made such a difference to the size of projects i work on so as you will see behind me you may see flashes in this video uh, this is my Ilford, it's nearly done. Um, hopefully it will be done actually by the time you see this video. And I've been working on other equally bulky projects, lots of wool, lots of thick stuff. And the amount of clearance on this machine, I never thought about. I was like, oh, it's a slightly weird shape. It's amazing. And I think that goes as part of the heavy duty purpose is recognizing not only that you need power, but that the fabrics you will be working with require extra presser foot lift, they require space and having the metal here has really helped things slide through, like really impressed with it. Um, and it's just one of those little things that makes you happy because it's functional, it's useful. And I feel like this machine has been designed thinking about the people who will use it, the fabrics that will go through it and the projects that will go through it. And that's a delight, that's great to see. And you know, you guys know that I hate things that aren't functional. Like, functional and pretty, yay! Functional, great. Just pretty, eh. You know? It's a sewing machine. At the end of the day, you're spending a good chunk of money on it. It needs to work, and it needs to work for you. And I'm quite chuffed with how this machine does, actually. Um, it has given my starlet time to go and get a service. Time to get, you know, have a wrist, relax. Which I'm sure this machine will probably need after Christmas when I transfer back over to summer fabrics. Um, I would say as well, it's worth, like, it's worth highlighting. It is a heavy duty machine. However, it does really well on light fabrics as well. Um, I love the speed the needle goes down. It sounds like such a stupid thing to love, but it is while we're talking about it. It's so like smooth, the action is really delicate. Whereas some other machines can be a bit frenetic and like jerky. I found this to be lovely. I don't know if it's computerized, if it's because it's computerized, so there's, you know, something in there making it smoother, but I'm a big fan and it has been a joy to sew with thus far. Thing four is just a little thing. I like a drop-in bobbin now. I'm, I'm a bit of a convert. It's just, I never realized what a complete pain bobbin casings are until you don't have to have them. Um, so yeah, while it's not about this machine specifically, it's more general, I do think the drop-in bobbin on this machine is very good. I like the way that you cut the thread to come out of it. I think that's really useful. Um, again, I think it's been designed thinking about not just oh we'll have a drop in bobbin it's how do you get rid of that thread how do you secure it in place you know it's quite beginner friendly not that a drop in bobbin generally isn't but i do think this machine does a good job of making sure 
there's just no issues with your bobbin thread catching. It's not something I miss about side loading bobbins is trying to be like, oh God, has the thread come up? Is it picking it up, you know? And also I have to say, because there is a see-through window, I can see when my bobbin is running out. So rather than it being a horrifying shock, it is just a kind of, oh God, that's happening. I need to replace it. And I can queue up a bobbin up here, swap them over, bam, done, love it. Um, it is, it's such a little thing, but I find that when you get further into sewing, it's the little things that matter. It's the little things you start caring about where you go, oh God, bobbin chicken is annoying. Or, you know, I want to be able to side load my thread properly and it not, you know, bounce off or sit up here and get tangled. Or, oh my God, my hook, my, uh, hook keeps skipping, it's so frustrating. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I really care about the functionality. I really care about the little things and obviously the big things it needs to work but the little things really make me happy on this machine so hopefully this is a, a useful little roundup of the singer computerized heavy duty 675c uh, i think yes it is sorry that um for some reason that just won't sit in my brain i keep forgetting the five <laughs> so it's a great machine i'm really enjoying using it i think there are only two things that i just you know in the sake of balance you guys know i always try to be balanced in reviews um, firstly, the, I cannot get a denim needle into it for love nor money, I don't know why, um, I've literally taken the whole like shank off everything and tried to put it in and it just doesn't work, so I'm wondering if there are specific denim needles for this machine model or type, because they are singer ones that I'm using, so TBC to be investigated, um, the other thing is the measurements on the foot plate if I show you so they're really quite far back centimeters at the front which I find annoying as a person who uses inches but on the little window you've only got a quarter of an inch but it'd be really really useful to have the five eighths as well that's like the only other thing where I'm like ah oh, that's annoying but overall it's a good machine it's solid it's great if you want to take on some more complex projects it hasn't struggled with anything I've made with it and I've done like, you know, a lot of wool, um, a lot of thicker garments, I've done lots of zips with it. Um, it comes with loads of extra feet, which is awesome. It, mine came with a walking foot as well, which is really cool. I've yet to try it, but it's there. Um, it comes with a normal zip foot. I would say it doesn't come with an invisible zip foot, which is something I do need to get for it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Let me know if you've got this machine in the comments below in the Black Friday sales. You may have uh, decided to grab one. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining me for another review. There's been a small gap, as you can probably tell, between um, the main body of this video and the end because I had, again, some issues with my phone. I am going to get a new phone um, because it just doesn't like filming at the moment which is really, really annoying. So we're gonna get there, <laughs> it'll, it'll be fine, we'll get there. But I hope you enjoyed this video, um, and yeah, if you've got any further questions, always let me know in the comments. I've linked to this machine as well in the bio. Um, this is not sponsored video, I was given this machine, but as you guys know, like I, I'm a Singer Outlet ambassador, but I haven't been asked to do this video, this is something that I have just done. And it is my honest opinion, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.